Hello everyone, today I want to demonstrate how I typically complete a root canal from start to finish using the EMS 200 by MetaBioMed. I really like this equipment, it's all in one so it includes the apex locator, the motor, the heat source, along with the obturation devices. And I've planned this video for a while, it's only made possible to do this in my apartment because of its portability and ease of use. So today I'm going to demonstrate how I do a root canal using this J-shaped clear acrylic rock. So basically after the access, I do play it safe for most of the time by using a K8, 10, or 15 hand file to get the glide path to the apex and find the working length. The EMS 200 is great. The apex locator works really well. And I find that it's a little bit more flexible in different conditions to still find the working length, whether it's a little bit on a drier side or the wetter side, or whether it's a smaller canal or bigger canal. And it kind of sounds and looks like this. So once the glide path is found and the working length is found, I would click on the button on the touchscreen to change to the motor setting. My favorite settings are 500 RPMs with about 1.0 Newton centimeter torque limit. So after this torque limit is set and RPMs are set, I start with my first file. So in general, I start with files that are more crown down in methods such as the Pro Tapers. My first one just happens to be the Pro Taper Next X1. What I like about the X1 file is that it starts the coronal cutting from the crown down, but it also is flexible enough to kind of recreate that glide path that I started with the hand file. So the movements that I use for the X1 is this in and out sort of movements where I reiterate that same motion to get down to apex. Because it's not that aggressive, it's okay to go in and out several times once you get down to your apex. After the first file, I of course irrigate. In real life, I use sodium hypochlorite. But in this case, I'm just using water. And I kind of do that in between each file. So after I finish X1 and move on to S1 Pro Taper Gold. In this case, the motions are similar to X1 except I'm brushing against the walls and it helps just bring the debris out from the canal system. So after I finish that, I then move forward by irrigating and going on to the sequence of S2 and then with F1. In all cases, I'm brushing against the walls. It's not very aggressive and it helps bring the debris out and work your way down to the apex very safely. So after in this removal of the coronal and midsection of the canals, I then move forward to a constant taper file. I use either a vortex blue or a endo sequence file. In this case, I in included both just to demonstrate the two possibilities that I use, but in general, I just pick one of the two. So in this case, I move from F1 to a 3004 Vortex Blue file. And just like the X1, I'm just mainly just going in, in and out uh, reiterations, pecking motions down to the apex. It's not very aggressive, so you can do that multiple times. So once again, I irrigate. With the Endo Sequence 3504 file, this file works a little bit differently. I basically kind of go in in one swoop with mild pressure uh, and then come out immediately after the apex. It cuts very aggressively, so you don't want to put too much pressure, just let the file spin and get out, and you don't want to stay in there too long. So after the cleaning and shaping, of course you want to irrigate again. So on the EMS 200, you can click on the pack and fill button. With this button, it will allow you to turn on both the heat source and the obturation device. My favorite setting for the pack setting is 300. So with the heat source, what I like about the EMS 200 is that it heats very quickly, it heats hot, and it cools quickly. And it's that combination that allows you to go in the canal, sear off, and it kind of sticks to the tip. And you'll see this demonstrating that it happens here. So with the sealer that I'm gonna use here, I, I like the Meta Biomed H plus sealer, resin based sealer. It looks great radiographically and most importantly, it has great working time and sealability. 
So I then take a 3504 master comb. In this case, you'll see that after the first comb fit, it was a little bit short. So I went back in really quickly with the 3504 endo sequence file. The second time it did go to the end of the apex. So then I coated the Meta Biomed sealer and pump motions down to the apex. So this kind of avoids the airlock that would prevent the gutta percha from going all the way down to the apex while extruding the sealer against the walls. So with the heat source at 300 Fahrenheit, I then go down about five millimeters down to the apex and sear off. So I typically go in while it's burning, let it cool down for about 10 seconds, do a quick burst of the heat again, and then I withdraw. If you do it like that, it typically sticks on the tip and it burns off very cleanly. So in this case, I do not have pluggers, but after I sear off, I use a plugger right away to kind of pack it down. And then I move on to the obturation. So the, another great thing about the EMS 200 here in this case is that you can change the cartridges very easily. In some other devices, you have to take out the protection gasket you have to remove another piece, place back in. In this case, everything's easily preloaded. So all you have to do is take the cartridge, put it in a clockwise motion and it snaps in very quickly. So if you run out, you can replace it very shortly. So with this other device here, accessory, you can kind of pre-curve it and allow you better access without breaking the tips. And I find that the tips are so sturdy that sometimes I can just use my fingers and pre-curve it. So once you pack, you can then bring the tip in and let it heat for a second on top of your sear off. Once you heat it, you can then extrude the gutta percha and allow it to push back. So what I like about the obturation device is that it comes out in a steady manner. It's mechanized. So you don't have to squeeze anything where you might lose control and cause voids. So there you have it. Once you Finished with that, you would typically use a plugger, which I don't have here, and you'll have a nice result in this manner.